Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Victory Graham and Patty, my wife Patty and myself, we want to thank all of you for being here and coming out to support such an important evening, both with your presence and your philanthropic dollars. It means so much. And, and the sense of community that you get every year that you're in this room is just so powerful and so palpable. And I think for Patty and I, the reason that we love this event so much is because the concept of community, sort of the power of individuals, each doing things selflessly that matter, all combined together form a thing called a community that can be, do so much, just be so incredibly powerful. 100 individuals, thousands of individuals coming together. And when you live in Boston, and you went through the events of the last couple of months, you understand the power of community, of people putting their own lives at risk, putting aside any of their petty needs to help our community. First of all, to help victims of a horrific act, and then our community as a whole, I think, to heal faster than it ever could. And when you think about that concept, and you think about the 100, I think there are incredible synergies. The Mass General Cancer Center actually has somebody who is a 100 award recipient, but who is inextricably linked with the marathon, not the horrific acts, but the actual positive acts that get associated with the Boston Marathon each year. And that's Dr. Howard Weinstein. Dr. Weinstein is a 2000, yeah. Dr. Weinstein is a 2012 honoree, but most importantly, he's very physically fit. He's run the marathon 23 times, and yeah, he's in really good shape. Uh, and 16 years ago, he realized he could run for a bigger purpose and bring that sense of community towards running the marathon, and he formed the Mass General Marathon team uh, to, to help raise funds for the pediatric cancer um, division of the Mass General Cancer Center. And underwritten by John Hancock, they have raised millions and millions of dollars for the Mass General Cancer Center. Thank you. And they are not the only Boston-based group that ran to raise money to eradicate this disease. And I'd like to ask Dr. Weinstein and his group and the John Hancock supporters to come up and please join me on stage. And while they do, we'll scroll the names of some of these other, of all the other groups that uh, ran to raise money for cancer as well. So please come up. And... And while Dr. while Dr. Weinstein's group is coming up, I'd like to ask John Krasinski, who grew up watching the marathon right near his house in Newton, to come up and join us as well. Uh, you got it. We got it here. Come on, come on. It's all right. So, so Dr. Krasinski, Dr. Krasinski. <laughs> Maybe he plays a doctor on TV. <laughs> plays an office guy on TV. But <laughs> the, Dr. Dr. Weinstein and his team do an amazing job each year. And this year they had a goal of a million dollars that they wanted to raise when, when, when they were out running. And due to the things that happened afterwards, some of the philanthropy that would have come to this team got redirected. So instead of a million dollars, which was their goal, they raised about $750,000. Now, for those of you that have been at this dinner before, you know this is about the time where you get a pitch. And that pitch normally goes towards the general fund of the Cancer Center. But this year, the pitch is going to go to help this team that fell a quarter of a million dollars short. And they don't usually ever fall short of their goal, help bridge the gap. And in order to help us get there to do that, there were some trustees of the hospital who heard that this gap existed, and they wanted to step up to help. So um, just in no particular order, Chad Gifford and his wife, Ann, Henry Tremere and his beautiful wife, Belinda, Carl Martin Yeti, one of my best friends in the world, and John Krasinski have gotten together 
and created a $100,000 challenge. They will match the first $100,000 that we raise here tonight dollar for dollar. Now, on every table, there are some donation sheets and some pens, and I'd like to ask you to pick them up, but not to fill them out yet. Uh, all spread across the room, we have baseball players from St. Mary's baseball team, 100 honoree from this year, yeah. And they're going to walk around to collect the sheets. But before you fill them out, put the pen in your hand, put the sheet in your hand. But please just listen to me for one more minute. I promise Anne Murray Page said it so eloquently. This will be the Cliff Notes version. I will do it quickly. The reason you need to fill out that sheet to the best of your individual ability is very simple. Dr. Haber was up here earlier describing it. He is a very modest man. He is also brilliant. He is also going to lead the cancer center that solves the riddle of this disease. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. And it, he, he and his team are proving every day that targeted therapies are what it's all about. He's come up with the technology that lets you look at an individual's blood and see the genetic mutation of the specific cancer. So now, if Jim and Joe each have colon cancer, if they go anywhere else in the world, and if they had gone anywhere else over the last number of years, they would be treated the same. And so the, the percentages are lower because cancer is not the same in any one individual. Dr. Haber and the team have figured that out and they are unlocking using their brilliant minds and the concepts of big data to solve this disease. They are ahead of everybody else, and they are going to get there first. So that's the first reason you have to fill this out to the best of your ability. The second and last reason is this, and you saw it in the first video of the night. Peter Slavin took over this hospital a decade ago, and one of the things that he did, and it's why I'm so proud to consider him a friend that I admire so greatly, is he said, we are going to give compassionate care to everybody who enters the door of our hospital. Nobody's a number. This isn't a factory. This is about people. And you see what Stephanie did with Schwang, and you hear that story. That's the culture that he's created there and that everybody practices. So please, take that form. We're going to solve cancer. We're treating everybody with the utmost compassion. Please, please, please give to the best of your ability and help these guys well exceed their goal. Thank you very much. And while our baseball players are walking around, we have some pictures from the uh, MGH 20th mile of the marathon photo lab or something to that effect. <laughs> and we're going to see them up here while these guys walk around. <laughs> or we're supposed to. <laughs> huh? There we go. <laughs> start, we're going to start it okay. So now, the, the way we're going to conclude the evening with our last honorees very much come back to the concept of community. You're going to see some people who just in actions in their everyday life are helping to band together to make this disease much less painful for the people who are suffering from it. Thank you again. Every day, in our battle with cancer, ordinary people do extraordinary things to make a difference. The Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center honors the 100 who, each in their own way, put their own special talents to work and strive to turn kind thoughts into powerful deeds. People who use their medical and scientific brilliance to outthink cancer and innovate new approaches to care. Creative souls who use their art to encourage physical 
emotional, and spiritual healing. Those whose hearts open through the joy of giving, enabling the continuation of essential cancer research, care, and education. Loving and caring individuals for whom compassion is a way of life, a calling to help however they can. Communities who understand that when we come together with a commitment to take action, powerful things can happen. From every walk of life, the 100 come. Because we know that cancer isn't an abstract cause, it's each person, every day, touching the life of another person. This drive to do something meaningful is a common thread among the 100 honorees. They ensure that kind thoughts become actions that benefit real people in very personal ways. Let me share three examples. Ellen McSweeney nominated her co-workers Tricia Ferguson, Mike Jones, and Kim Rock at the Institution for Savings in Newburyport. Ellen underwent a year of intensive cancer treatment during which time her husband was also diagnosed with cancer. The bank held her job for her and provided short and long-term benefits, things you might expect from a good employer, but they didn't stop there. They offered transportation, sent groceries, hired a cleaning service, and helped Ellen and her husband provide a Christmas for their family. In a terrible time, Ellen's co-workers were the greatest gift. Ray Gobi and Robert Kilroy are ambulance drivers who made a difference for one patient, but not through their EMT training. Bringing Sterling Winder home from the hospital for the last time, before she began hospice care, Ray and Robert asked Sterling, is there any place you want to go? We have a few minutes. Sterling said, the beach. She had always loved the water. So they drove Sterling and her mother to the beach. Such stops are not normal protocol, but Ray and Robert chose to be in the moment with one patient and act kindly. When Eileen McGurk was battling cancer, she wasn't feeling well enough to handle calls and visits from all her friends and family. So with the help of her husband and daughter, Eileen's community expressed their love through a powerful symbol of connected compassion. They gathered in a field below her hospital window, 200 of them, some holding signs, some dancing. Eileen was given binoculars so she could identify everyone, and they passed a telephone around so she could talk to them all. Finally, the flash mob formed a giant heart filling Eileen's heart with joy. This room is filled with people who do remarkable things every day and for whom these acts of kindness are part of their way of being. It's seemingly small things that can make an indelible mark. A visit to the beach, our daily errands, connecting with our friends. Tonight, we honor you for what you do every single day to the 100 of 2013. We say thank you.